Judgment in the matter of R on the application of Call versus Secretary of State for Justice. This case is about one aspect of a long standing concern that the prison system is, to quote Baroness Corston, largely designed by men for men, and that women have been marginalized within it. This is largely because women constitute only 5% of the prison population, and the system is struggling to cope with the ever-increasing demands made upon it. The issue before us, however, is not whether the system should be making different and better provision for women, but whether in one respect it constitutes unlawful sex discrimination against them. In 2004, the appellant was convicted of murder and sentenced to life imprisonment with a tariff of 11 years and three months, due to expire in November 2015. She has lived for most of her adult life in London and has children and grandchildren there. But she expected that, when released on license, she will be required to live for a while in what are known as approved premises. The object of these premises is to promote the safe transition of high and medium risk prisoners from prison to the community thus protecting the public, reducing reoffending, and promoting rehabilitation. As part of this, the Secretary of State's policy is to place offenders in premises as close as possible to their homes, families, and communities. The problem is that, while there are 94 such premises for men spread around the country, with several in the London area, there are only six for women, unevenly spread, with none in London or in Wales. This means that women are far more likely than men to be required to live a long way away from their homes and families. Since these proceedings were begun, for example, the appellant has been released on license, was required to live in approved premises in Bedford for some nine months, was not able to look for accommodation in London because of the terms of her license, and so has been housed in rented accommodation in the Bedford area thus perpetuating the separation from her family. These judicial review proceedings were launched to challenge the lack of provision for women, particularly in the London area, as discriminatory. It was also alleged that the Secretary of State had failed to discharge the public sector equality duty, which required him to address possible impacts, assess whether there was disadvantage, how significant that was, and what steps might be taken to mitigate it. The High Court judge, Mr Justice Cranston, found that nothing approaching this has ever been done, and thus he made a declaration that the Secretary of State had failed to discharge this duty. The Secretary of State did not appeal against this declaration. However, both the High Court and the Court of Appeal dismissed the appellant's challenge based on unlawful sex discrimination, and so she has appealed to this court. Section 29, subsection 6 of the Equality Act 2010 provides that a person must not do anything in the exercise of a public function, which this is, that constitutes discrimination. Section 13, subsection 1 of that Act provides that it is direct discrimination if, because of a protected characteristic such as sex, that person treats someone less favourably than he treats or would treat others. Female prisoners are treated less favourably than male prisoners because, on release, they are much more likely to be required to live far from their homes and families than are the men. This is discrimination, even if some women are lucky enough to be placed near their homes. The fact that the reason for this is not any deliberate desire to treat women less favourably makes no difference. In the leading case on sex discrimination, Birmingham City Council provided fewer grammar school places for girls than for boys not because they wanted to treat girls less favourably, but for historical reasons. There were fewer girls' schools. This was unlawful, even though some girls were able to get grammar school places and there was no malice against those who could not do so. However, direct discrimination can sometimes be justified. The Equality Act provides that providing separate services for men and women is not unlawful if certain conditions are met. In the case of services which are separate and different, such as these, those conditions are A, that a joint service for men and women will be less effective, B, that it is not reasonably practicable to provide a service which is not different, and C, 
that the limited provision is a proportionate means of meeting a legitimate aim. Condition A is satisfied here. There have to be single-sex establishments because of the particular vulnerability of the women who are required to live in approved premises. Condition B is also satisfied because the appellant accepts that it would not be reasonably practicable to provide the same number of premises for women as for men. But condition C has not been satisfied because the Ministry of Justice has never addressed its mind to how it might provide sufficient and suitable places in approved premises for the women who need them in a way which would achieve, so far as practicable, the aim of placing them as close as possible to home. It is for the Secretary of State to show that the discrimination is justified, and in the light of the unchallenged breach of the public sector equality duty, this has not yet been done. The Supreme Court therefore allows the appeal to the limited extent of making a declaration that the provision of approved premises in England and Wales constitutes direct discrimination, which is unlawful unless justified. No such justification has yet been shown by the Secretary of State. It would, however, be open to the Secretary of State to seek to justify the limited provision in any claims for compensation for unlawful sex discrimination brought by individual women, including this appellant. The court is now adjourned.